It's not about motivation. Winners need discipline. Wake up and win today. Discipline comes from within. Boxing King Media in association with Boxer Hamza Shiraz. Uh, as Frank Warren said, Britain's next big star. What are you feeling right now? It's been a couple of hours since your knockout win first round. Yeah, no, Alhamdulillah, all, all uh, praise to Allah, all, um, first and foremost. But yeah, no, it was a good performance, man. Um, I was just sat there looking back at a few, a few clips and I felt sharp, I looked sharp um, and I was sharp as well. So I'm just uh, over the moon, man. Everyone's been talking about your discipline and how you changed as a fighter. I've noticed your team's eating pizzas and burgers and you're just drinking water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, man. You know what it is? I've under... I, People might think, oh, he's so he's trying to be so perfect, but that's not the case. I've under like with my nutrition, I'm very tight with my nutritionist, pro nutrition pool. And to be, to have longevity in this sport, you've got to study the likes of Khabib, uh, the likes of uh, Arta Baturbiev as well. And if you really delve into how these guys live, it's clean, man. They they they're at one with God, and they they live a very clean life. So they're my role models. So anything they do, I try to replicate to the best of my ability. Frank Warren compared you to Tommy Hearns, but I was speaking to Spencer Fearon and he said to me, you're more like Oscar De La Hoya, which I think is, I don't know if anyone's ever said that you to you before. What? You know what, it's very, very funny you say that. And this is how you know Spencer knows his boxing. Ricky's favourite boxer is Oscar De La Hoya. And when he gets me to shape up, he always makes me watch Oscar De La Hoya as well. So it's mad that he said that. And it's, it's just got, it's a testament to Ricky and his knowledge, to be fair. Because um, there's a certain way, like, the how side on you get, how Oscar used to get on as uh, side as well, with, and just use his jab. It's just, just the dynamics of it, and uh, yeah, no, it's great, man. That's fascinating, that, because everyone just says Tommy Ian's just because of your height, but but you, but you don't back box nothing like Tommy Ian's yeah. to be fair. Yeah, yeah, no, I can't, I agree with that as well. You know, and I'm, I've been getting mentioned like with him, and it's an honour to be mentioned in the same name as him. But I believe I got like a you. Like, if I if I if I was to watch what watch me as a fan, it looked like. He, the kid can bang, but he has a very weird style. Not not like, not pleasing, but he's very tall, rangy, but he can fight on the inside, so you don't know what you're going to get with me. So, like I said, I'm blessed. In the build-up to this fight, a lot of people are saying, Liam Williams, you know, it could be shot because uh, the way he lost to Chris Eubank Jr. Even though he didn't get stopped, he got dropped a few times. But I said it to you a couple of weeks ago. I said, at the end of the day, he's now at a three, four-month camp. You know what I mean? And... He's never been stopped. The, the losses have all come at a high level, but what you've gone and done there, no man's ever done that to him. So there's obviously going to be two sides to this. People are going to, some are going to say, yeah, he was shot, that's why he did it. And some are going to say Hamza Shields is that good. Yeah. So what do you think? You know what, first and foremost, I just want to uh, say it was an honour to share the ring with uh, Liam. Someone who I've watched, I've had a few encounters with as well on Twitter back in the day. But someone who I've watched, I remember I told him in the ring afterwards, I remember watching him against Mark Heffron and I said uh, I, I said straight away that is how you use a jab that is and I kind of learned from that performance as well so to be in a ring with someone like him who's mixed it at the top is a pleasure in itself but listen going back to what you were saying about what everyone's saying and that is what it is isn't it I'm so used to people's opinions and getting hate and whatnot it's, it's part of this what I've learned to understand is that it's part of the sport it is what it is everyone's got opinions and you just got to do you and crack on that's a very fair assessment. Well, I spoke to Lima. He hasn't done any interviews, but he told me that you're the hardest puncher he's faced. He was shocked with your timing and speed and how hard you punch. Yeah. And he also said that this is the best training camp he's had. Oh. He had no injuries. He's been sparring with Ben Whittaker, Shaq and Peters, and he's been holding his own. So he felt that was the best Liam Williams you got tonight at 31 years old. Uh, not really got any miles on the clock, to be fair to him. You know, it takes a big, big man to admit that and, and to say no excuses. That's why he's got such a big fan base and everyone loves him as well. So just like I said, I have a lot of respect for him and a newfound respect as well. But yeah, it just goes to show my camp. Listen, my, I think with this fight, when it got announced, people were so concerned about what he could do to me, they were forgetting what I could do to him. And it was kind of, they got everyone got a bit blindsided. Like, oh, is Hamza going to be able to take his power? Is he being able to do this? Is he being able to do that? At the end of the day, I knew what I was capable of, and and yeah, man, um, it was a good night. And let's be real, man. Known punches like Chris Eubank Jr., uh, Liam Smith on two occasions weren't able to stop Liam Williams, but you did it tonight. Yeah, no, I know, I know. I, I, I hope I send out a statement out there. 
Um, like you said, people, everyone's got their opinions and whatnot, it is what it is, but I'm doing my promoter proud, I'm doing my team proud, I'm doing my family, uh, family proud, and that's the main thing at the end of the day. I just saw, you know, your interactions with some of your fans after your post uh, after party and somebody was saying about how since you become like really religious deep into your faith that there's more like light on your face and stuff like that, you know, just kind of, do you feel that or, you know, have a lot of people said that to you, there's more like, you know, uh, I think Muslims may understand there's more light on your face. Yeah, for sure, man, for sure. You know, I think people, they what they think is, oh, he's only like religious before his fights and whatnot, but that's not the case. I've, I've slowly started to bring it in the last three fights and Alhamdulillah, like I said, you met the brothers from LA now and Aki Eamon, he's here as well. He come to support me, a top brother. Um, and I suppose at the end of the day, it's, it's not even just about getting together as a brotherhood, it's getting together as a community as a whole who, who, we can, who, who can help inspire future generations. Because at the end of the day, look at the likes of Muhammad Ali, how his imprint is still left on this world even though he's passed away. Uh, may Allah grant him the highest ranks of Jannah, I mean, um, but yeah, it just goes to show that how powerful you can be as a community. And I notice you've got fans who are non-Muslims here as well yeah, today, which, which is good to see. And some people may be watching this, see, I know you've got prayer beads on your neck. Do you want to explain to your non-Muslim fans, you know, what, what's, this, what's the sketch with the necklace you got on? My necklace, uh, yeah, no, I, I bought it from Saudi Arabia, uh, Medina to be uh, uh, exact, yes, uh, to be exact. Um, and I just, it kind of helps me remember, do, uh, we call it zikr, it kind of helps us remember God always in, in, no matter what you're doing, you're always re remembering God and praising God and asking for forgiveness as well. And I, um, just, I just slowly becoming more in touch. But like you said, we have, I know I've become in touch with my religion, but at the same time, we've got fans from England themselves. I've got fr uh, friends who come over from Poland who I made new fans from my last fight over there. So listen, I'm, I'm, all, I'm all for helping everyone. Uh, well done on that, Hamza. And the last thing is next. I know Chris Eubank Jr.'s name has been shouted out, but I, just want, I want to be realistic, you know, because no doubt, you know, he's chasing bigger paydays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Being realistic, would you think you'll be facing next? You know what? I don't. I don't really know. Listen, there's. If we're talking realistic, it's either going to be between Amo Williams and Nathan Heaney. I think they're the only realistic fights out there, and they're both great fights. Both great fighters. I have a lot of respect for both of the lads. Um, and they got the ingredients to make amazing fights. I mean, at the end of the day, I want to get to the top of the sport, but at the same time, you want to entertain the public. You want to take these big fights, these 50-50 fights, and that's what we're in boxing for. Well, Hamza, appreciate your time and uh, keep shining. Yeah, no, I just want to say a massive thank you to you as well, man, always giving us fighters the platform. Joining is the media that don't really get enough recognition, so huge thanks to you guys as well. Yeah, well, it takes two of us, man. We need the content, so appreciate <laughs> your time, Hamza. Thank you. Fear. Most people are governed by their habits, their fears, and their opinions of others.